Good morning, this is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncover No More. I used to do, and it was all deleted, I'm still working on deleting stuff on my largest YouTube. I used to do um, sermons on Sunday kind of thing. Other people have done it, and I've appreciated it. There's some irony in it because we can't go to church anymore, and um, that's a secret society in America, actually. It's hilarious because it's not really secret. When I walk up to anybody around me, where I live, and, you know, yeah, supposedly 50 years in the Lord, but, <laughs> but anything after it, everybody commiserates with everybody. We know what's going on. And sadly, in the federal government, it's extremely obvious that the Republican Party are fascists. Learning that that's been after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, actually, it, it became known, it became understood, it became reality, and they have no intention of changing, and it's just extremely um, truth in a way that is difficult to know what to do with. Um, pr prior to, I could see the storm becoming real as Barack, Obama, Barack and Michelle Obama went into the White House, were, were elected into the White House twice, and I didn't vote for them. I was still in the Republican cult, and the Christian cult is too much. It would have been too much for me. I didn't, I didn't have anything to say other than I was horrified <clears throat> how people, and I didn't know where it was sourced from, just knew it was on social media, you know, they were body shaming them and stuff like they normally do. They being masses of people who believe in bullying people just for whatever reason to be right somehow. I, I don't even know anymore. It's, it's, it's insanity. It's insanity what goes on on social media. It's, it's a good definition of functioning insanity because every, these people are paying their bills and stuff. They just have time to bully people. And um, even if I have been negative on Twitter or whatever, I've also always written poetry, um, done artwork, and, and released it. I'm balanced. I, even in conversations with somebody that's a baby boomer right now, I'm having to concentrate on, you know what, first off, I'm not gonna ex I'm not going to give into the shame I feel trying to rectify some of the stuff that's happened to me the past five years in, in, in our relationship, telling this person. And I told him today, you know, if you feel shame, just kick it out, because I just feel like a complete failure. And... I'm not, dad, gone. Um, and I'm not, so it's a lie. But um, it, sadly, in in my family, being large and coming out of Christianity, everybody just rips everybody up privately. Still, and I, I've been saying for years, we've got to start nourishing each other. Well, I have um, a couple of three people from my life that are actually willing to do that. I have somebody else that's older that needs to just be left alone. They're just bitter about everything and they need to turn that or not. It's up to them. And consequently, I feel like I failed. And I didn't. It's a lie. So, convincing myself of that is probably going to be the hardest thing I do in the next three to four years. Just moving on and convincing myself, you know, you believed in yourself and you were right to do that. It's basically what it boils down to. I believed in myself. I know who I am. And, and I love myself and I love my neighbor. Even on social media. And that's the right thing to do. It's the correct thing to do. I, I, I don't question that. But owning it for myself, because that's what I'm actually doing, is a, is a different matter entirely because of the toxic atmosphere in this country. And I live in Texas, so, you know, boom. If, if I was really going to do what I needed... After what I've been through, I'm about to be 50 years in the Lord, so to speak, and I'm not a Christian. It's just ridiculous. I, I would move to a blue state. I literally would pick up and move to a blue state. I would, I would get along better with people in general if I did that. But I've committed to stay, and I have my reasons. So it's a blue state if Kara's here. That's, that's where I'm going with this. It's a blue state if Kara's here. <laughs> I own part of Texas, too. 
Republican Party of Texas. Okay, so I did, I'm doing a series <clears throat> using some new cards with uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, two Robert Brownings, some letters. And see, I've got a whole bunch of work that I'm looking forward to this week on, on this section. And the question was back September 1st of 20, okay, so it, um, September 1st of 2021, so I was going into the quarter of 911, which is, you know, um, as an American, I need to forgive the mindsets of the Muslim people in the Middle East for doing that because I just, I just lit a candle for my Muslim sister in H-E-B and at, in Pflugerville. I had a lovely conversation with her and she didn't want the twin, she wants the twin towers to still be there just like me. Her kids are here. So it's really fucked up. It's really fucked up in our country. <laughs> so I'm a voice of change and so is my sister because we sat there. We stood there in line. She let me go before her. We stood in line and we had a conversation that was relevant. And when I told, when I flipped off Christianity to her in as nice of terms as I can, she identified, but yet was still respectful to you people. A lot of you, she can't even trust you that you won't walk up to her, get ugly because she's wearing the full hijab and everything. She, that you won't walk up to her, get ugly, and tell her to go to her own country when this is her country. Because y'all are doing it to a lot of people. It's ridiculous what you're doing. You're tearing your country down. Republicans and evangelicals, Christianity. You're telling, you're tearing your, your country down and you know it and you like it. So you can just, I don't know what I have to say to you anymore, but I did answer the question of patriarchy in the wisdom of the poet, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And the answer is yes. Yes, I should love them because I'm supposed to love my enemy because the patriarchy, um, Quanon, all of that conspiracy theory shit that's going on in the grand old party, Republican party, alongside it with evangelicals and everything, that's that's my enemy. And I even have some of that bullshit in my house, okay? People who just wanna keep fighting. Just have to have their own opinion, not willing to like agree with one another. Have to be different and have to have their own little world. And I've lost relationships. Even with people that I've pushed out of my body, I've lost relationships because of that one thing. I don't even know what to call it. It's stupid, okay? It's a waste of my time and energy and thanks, no thanks, for helping me feel like a piece of shit, particularly from the last 14 years after what I've been through as a sorceress. That is navel-gazing selfishness is all that bullshit is. So you can just go in your own little corner with that. And I can't believe I'm having to say that to people, I, to people I love and know, but there it is. And that's what I told somebody last night who is for all of us like I am. See, I, we're, we're both like, why aren't we moving on from this? Oh my God. This person is saying, I'm sorry that you're still dealing with that. But you know, I am the one that was the oldest. I'm the first person in the family that can say, <laughs> and nobody else is going to say it because we we have for, we left Christianity because of this bullshit, okay? Our family left Christianity because y'all are not, y'all are toxic. Christianity is toxic. Catholicism is toxic. You're toxic. Cut it out. But I'm the only one that can say, you know, 50 years. I'll be the only one in my family. 50 years. Not even my parents could say that. So if you want faithful Christianity, bitches, you got it in Kara Coffey, the Ministry of Uncovered Anymore, because I can talk your talk, I can walk your walk. Prove it. Have not been selfish, not one day of my life. Was a virgin when I got married. <laughs> You've rejected and rejected and rejected, and um, I'm not gonna reject you. I'm not going to give in to your bullshit. I'm going to turn the other cheek, even in my own home. Because some people have habit patterns from the Christian world that they don't want to drop or that they're sad that they lost control. You know what? Yikes. Control freaks. You're a bunch of control freaks. Here, I have this to say. Let's remember Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Her father 
this is England, 1800s, wasn't going to allow any of his, I think he had four or five children, to marry. That's, that's some real serious shit right there. That's very common back in the day, and particularly for property owners. This was written in August, August 20th, 1845, and I've already read it, so this is going to be an addendum because it's Sunday, and what's really screaming at me right now is dead, gum, expectation. I'm going to look in the thesaurus on this blog article and say, you know, <laughs> expectation. Excuse me. Mm, I just burped on the, my YouTube. Okay. So, and I'm going to throw... For all of us who are we're choosing to keep the peace, and I had people around my dining room table last night who were choosing to keep the peace, and we're like, I, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I was so mad yesterday, but it wasn't, you know, they come up and tell me you're just mad, and I always have to say no. You're not going to control my emotions. I'll tell you when I'm mad at you. Straighten your ass up if I am, and, I, and I'm talking about parenting right there. Uh, you know, the common traits of teenagers is something I'm tired of putting up with, but. I still have to put up with it because I still have teenagers in my life. It's a privilege. <laughs> I can tell you what's not a privilege. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's too easy. I have said this before and I'm going to say it again and I'm going to put it in writing. So let me write it down so I can go on my artwork this morning. It is too easy to start a fight. The hardest thing you're ever going to do is actually agree with somebody that you don't want to because you lost control or you want more control of whatever surroundings you think you don't have. Casting things in dramatic light just to make yourself correct is is as old as the hills in the United States of America, middle class family issue. And it ain't just teenagers that are professional at it, no matter what their job is. I'm not being facetious. I'm just being blank honest. Because it is Sunday. Hypocrisy is running high. Expectation. You know what? It, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. Um, I don't know what to call this. I'm going to call it mourning. You're mourning your loss of your supposed control in your life. A lot of you. And it's from baby boomers even down to older Gen Z. Mourning your loss, your supposed loss of control. And, and you're, you're not focusing on gratefulness now. You're not focusing on greatness, gratefulness now. Today. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to close. With rereading the portion I'm dealing with, and I'll put a little bit of it into it because <coughs> Robert Browning was back then, if you can accept it, in the same position of Kara Coffee today in America, which means we've come a far way because I'm a woman, so I'm I can't I can't even hold, do I can't even say that even today. You know, women are viewed as less intelligent on a regular basis. It's hilarious. <clears throat> so this letter, all I observed concerning yourself, because what, one of the things that I can tell that Robert Browning fell in love with, with Elizabeth Barrett Browning, is that she knows who you are. That's why it's easy for me to channel her, because I do that for everyone. I know who you are, and it's 
and beautiful. And then all this vitriol comes out because people like to control women. It's just, it's self-serving and it feel, makes you feel important. And so a lot of times, and I think my daughters have been caught in this, a lot of times we're, we have to compete with you in your small world of expectation and the love of discordance that you actually have. I mean, you know, we even have a social media, the discord, that's not a good word, people, okay? If you're having to find friendships out there because of what's going on in your private life, I'm terribly sorry, that is very tragic. I have the same issue, and yet, again, I had people around the table with me that just were there for me last night, one of great, and we painted. So I have proof that I don't actually have that. But to have kindred spirit friends my own age or slightly older or younger in Gen X, no, I don't have that. I don't have that, and I do feel alone in that zone. And so I understand it. And so I had to pass through another chasm of suffering of saying, uh, oh, well, here it is. I'm still not going to give in to these expectations that I was trained in. And if I didn't, it did not keep those expectations up for my entire life. I'm, I'm, I'm a failure, a disappointment. That's what Christianity teaches women to do. They, it, they push us. Catholicism and Christianity pushes us beyond our breaking point. Many, many times, we're not insane. We're not mentally ill. We're overworked, underappreciated, and we need to walk off. And we're doing so, and it's ugly. Because, honestly, um, particularly people younger than me, girls, attack me. And they just, I don't even, they don't care. They do not care. And that's wrong. It's morally wrong. And I'm tired of being caught in the middle. <clears throat> so I'm going to, I keep taking different different zones of what's happened to me. I just keep saying, okay, solitary pagan, agnostic. I don't believe in this way of healing people privately. I don't believe in this. I believe in what happened across, around my table with people younger than me. We were painting. I believe in cleaning my bathrooms at 1.30 because I couldn't sleep and then I went and had a good night's rest. Okay, I believe in that. I don't believe in the rest of this bullshit. So, that, so she was encouraging him because he was attacked. That's what I was going to say. He was attacked just like me. Yeah, he had this beautiful... I mean, if you read his poetry, after I finish these letters here, I'm going to go do a poem with, that Robert Browning is actually channeling another man. I'm looking so forward to it. It's going to be a lesson for me in my channeling abilities. I'm channeling Elizabeth Barrett Browning this morning. Okay. <laughs> That's easy to see. <clears throat> so this letter is, All I observed concerning yourself was the combination, which not an idiom in chivalry could treat grammatically as a thing common to me and you, inasmuch as everyone who has known me for half a day may know that, if there is anything peculiar in me, it lies this, Oh, excuse me, it lies, for the most part, in an extraordinary deficiency in this, and this, and this. There is no need to describe what. Only nuns of the strictest sect of the nunneries are rather wiser on some points and have led less restricted lives than I have in others. And if it had not been for my carpet work, quote unquote, you don't know how many times I've told people, I'm going to do this for you. They love me. Well, I finally landed on something, carpet work, which is her artwork. <laughs> Shit. These habits never die. Love you. Bye.